Thank you for joining us for this sermon podcast from United Church on the Green, located in New Haven, Connecticut. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited and welcome. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to learn more about our open and affirming ministry at United Church on the Green, please visit our website at unitednewhaven.org. Thank you. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12, which can be found in your Pew Bible on page 688 of the Old Testament. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. In such, the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself, is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in the sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindication shall go before you The glory of God shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. Our second reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, which is at page 3 of the New Testament in your pew Bible. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, show, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angst concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Friends, God is still speaking. May we keep our hearts and ears open to listen and understand. First, I want to thank you all for showing up today. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. When the time changes, sometimes it's a struggle to begin a new rhythm. And I also want to thank Jocelyn for inviting me to preach today and sharing her pulpit with me. Another thing I want to thank all of you for is for welcoming welcoming me into this fellowship um, in July of 2018. It's an honor to serve God shoulder to shoulder with each of you. So during my life journey, I've been a member of seven churches before this one, and that many denominations. <laughs> I enjoy observing how we at United Church as the collective body of Christ do worship and Christianity. This church is one of the most community outreach oriented places I've been a part of. It's as if we've asked, God, what are you doing? And I can imagine God taking us up to East Rock her perspective and saying, see those preschoolers? I'm there. See the hungry, see the addicted, those without a house? I'm there. This is a church that has listened and constantly does something to bring help and comfort to serve those who are in need. So before we begin, I'd like to just say a quick prayer. God, thank you for being here among us, for being here at United Church on the Green, for being here in New Haven, here in the world. And God, I pray that you would show us how to walk this Christian life together today. Let my words Bring honor and glory to you, God. Amen. I've heard a wise saying, and it goes something like this. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. This could not be more true. First of all, it is always wise to be kind. But when we consider looking through the eyes of another, we realize that life can be very difficult. It can be a hard battle. Almost everyone is carrying pain and suffering, even when we don't know about it. When we look through the eyes of others, it softens our hearts and it makes it easier to be kind. During this season of Lent, we are focusing on each of the two scriptures that Al read for us from Isaiah that speaks of the fast that God chooses from injustice, oppression, exploitation, and harm to those who are vulnerable. This is our responsibility, and we're paying attention to it as a church during this Lenten season. Each week, we're also hearing from the book of Matthew, the story of Jesus' experience in the wilderness and immediately following his baptism. We don't know the details of his days in the wilderness, but simply considering the word wilderness, we know what was going on because the wilderness is difficult. It's scary. It's relentless. We know that his life did not become easy after this either. This is what Lenten season is all about. 
Here in Matthew, we're reading about Jesus' life. The life of Jesus. The life of the one that we follow. The life of the one whose name, Christian, we take on. The life of one of the most kind, loving, caring people that ever lived and yet was filled with suffering. It was difficult. Difficult. This is not a lesson on how to be spiritual. This is te Jesus teaching us how to be human. We read in Matthew 4, 3 and 4, how Jesus takes care of the highest need. It says, the tempt tempter came to him and he said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. At that moment, Jesus must sustain his very life. It could look to us like he needs that bread to take care of himself. But at that moment, he answers, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In the past few weeks, when I placed these two scriptures side by side, I saw first how important it is to take care of the suffering of others. And then I noticed how Jesus takes care of his own suffering. As many of you know, I see a great deal of suffering on a daily basis because I work at Yale New Haven Hospital as a chaplain. I think this is the reason that some of the theme of suffering seemed to jump out at me. Presently, we live in suffering. In the book of Romans, there's a description of creation being frustrated in constant bondage to suffering. I remember the beautiful verses in Ecclesiastes 3. It's even put to mu music in the famous um, beautiful song by the birds called Turn, 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 Turn. Some of you might remember. We love this because uh, we love the best part, the good part, like this part. There's a time for everything in a season, for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to plant, a time to heal, a time to build, a time to laugh, a time to dance, a time together, a time to embrace, a time to search, a time to keep, a time to love, and a time to be at peace. Yes, yes. This is what life is all about. And I want it to be what my life is full of. The good. But wait. Listen as I read it the opposite way. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Time to die. A time to uproot. A time to kill. A time to tear down. A time to weep. A time to mourn. A time to scatter. A time to refrain from dancing. A time to give up. A time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to hate, a time for war. A way to make sense of this suffering is this. Suffering is a natural part of life, and it's unavoidable. The unavoidable suffering of others, of Jesus, of our own, it's natural. We do everything in our power to avoid it, but it's part of our life. Life. It's to live and to be born and to love and to enjoy and to suffer. Our challenge is to look at suffering and say, God is here. The suffering in our journey gives us a longing to experience the good and share good with others. When it is the I that suffers, I look for a goal and a purpose for providing relief from suffering. There is great confidence in knowing that suffering in life brings God's love and is with me, and God is with me. 
I want to be relieved. I'm looking for relief. When I take a pill, I want to find relief and um, think that maybe it can be found in a partner. I want to win the lottery, believing that all of my suffering will go away if I have an abundance of money. I want to drink a drink or eat a meal that will relieve my pain. Many of us do these things and other things looking for relief. Me? Honestly, what I want is God just to swoop down and rescue me. But these things do not relieve my suffering. I haven't experienced God rescuing me. But I have found that God is always, always, always in my life when I suffer. Faith in God's love for me is what holds me through. I cannot imagine a life without a faith in God that is bigger than myself and a God who sits with loved ones in their pain and suffering and utter despair. God works with me on my behalf and with my best interests always at the forefront. May we all possess the willingness to accept God's invitation to be our companion in life and in suffering. I've been reading the book by Richard Rohr called The Universal Christ, and I love a quote that I, that I read. And it says, when I heroically do it alone, I slip into distractions, denials, and pretending, and I do not learn suffering's softening lesson, lessons. But when I find a shared meaning for something, especially that allows me to love God and to love others in the same action, God gets me through it. And I begin the ambiguous, I begin to trust the ambiguous process of life. We are not abandoned by God. God is present when I'm suffering. Suffering betrayal in fill in the blank. When I'm betrayed by my body. When I'm betrayed by society. When I'm betrayed by death. When I'm betrayed by a partner. When I'm betrayed by my boss. When I'm betrayed by my family. When I'm betrayed by the outbreak of coronavirus. We are not abandoned by God. We are never abandoned by God. Our hope resides in God. Jesus was experiencing in the wilderness a betrayal of many things. But that's what the Lenten season reminds us of. Jesus declared his only need was to receive the word of God to live. In the New Testament, in Hebrews, it says, For we do not have a high priest that is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one that is like us, and God gives us mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. God is personal, and God is with us, and in and through our sadness and grief and suffering. We can have confidence that God is with us. God is beside us. God is our greatest fan and believes in us. Shauna, you can do this suffering. You can do this life thing, this inevitable thing of suffering. There's a beauty that happens in suffering. God is revealed in suffering. It's all around us. The trees that turn beautiful in autumn are preparing for suffering winter. The flowers that fade and begin to bloom during this season. There's even beauty in aging. There's transformation and wisdom that comes with growing older and older. 
Like the quote from Roar, there's a softening in the lessons of life. Transformation is revealed. Like the chrysalis turning into a butterfly, although I don't want it there, I'm thankful for it. No, I really don't want it, and I certainly want, don't want it to define me or who I am forever. But I want to look at my suffering and let it remind me that none of us get out of that part of life, no matter how hard we try. When I look at my own life, I have an understanding of myself and compassion for others. My heart opens and gives me the capacity to live with myself and to represent the God that I serve. In suffering, ultimately, after the worst is over, I have a choice. I have the choice to interact with God. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. I have a choice to interact with the very mystery of God. Roar also says in his book that when we're sincere in the process of suffering, it is not something I'm dealing with, but something that's dealing with me. We cannot control our suffering. We cannot predict it, but we can control who we are in it. God's tool of transformation and a place to grow spiritually healthy. I've had some very difficult years of suffering, and now I have adult children, and I'm teaching them as a mother who is aging. I talk to them about life's suffering and how there's no reason to be ashamed of it, to be honest about the experience of it. I want my family and those I minister with here and those I minister with at the hospital to know that suffering transforms us. It is my inheritance from God and an inheritance of intangible love. This is not a hope of a life that is beyond now. It's something we can experience right now. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.